Hi y'all, welcome to another Four Ways video where we, uh, me and my collaboration partners Richard Raffin, Sam Angelo, and Tomislav Tomasic each do a video on the same project. Uh, this is our 21st uh, video project and it was my turn to select and I selected a wing box. Looks a lot like turning a propeller, looks kind of dangerous, but it's not as difficult as it looks as I'm going to show you. So what kind of wood do we need? Well, we need a dried piece of wood. Uh, I've made several of these boxes out of a piece about this size, two inches by one and a quarter by seven inches, and that turns a box looks like this. And if you're doing it in your first one, you might start off with something a little, uh, a little, little smaller like this. I like to have contrasting wood. We'll talk a little bit more later about lids, but you can have, make a little short lid like this, or you can make something a little fancier with a, a, a finial in it. You can turn them separately and add it to the wood. So we're going to start off with a piece of dried mahogany, two and a quarter by two and a half by eight inches long. I've got several scraps of wood that I can use for uh, lid material. Uh, we'll, we'll see as we get into it what I decide. For the initial mounting, I'm going to use a, a, a simple process. I'm going to use a shop-made screw chuck. I could use a woodworm screw, but this is fast and easy. I've got it mounted with a faceplate ring. Now, this requires us to measure very carefully to center the hole that we're going to drill for the, uh, for the screw chuck. Actually, this is going to be the top. I'm going to have the widest top. So carefully identify the corners. All right, so then I'm going to mark that with a awl. Okay. And now I'm going to drill a hole. I've marked how, how deep. Deep is the drill bit in this case. This will give a very, very secure hold. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the bottom and put a tenon on the bottom. We're going to shape some of the, the uh, bottom of the uh, wings. Now, the advantage of having a little larger piece, if you have a smaller piece, uh, the wings aren't going to be quite as dramatic. Uh, so I want dr dramatic wings. I want a little bit taller. Okay, this is a project you definitely want a face shield. I'm using some of this uh, static uh, dryer stuff, uh, softener, fabric softener. If you, if you clean your windshield, it's getting a little bit colder here in uh, North Georgia, and as a result, the uh, humidity is dropping in my shop, so static, the uh, dust clings a little bit more than it did when it was a little more humid. Okay, I mounted it, brought up my tailstock. I know from experience that I can mark this by just laying it with a pencil flat and it'll give me the right size for my normal normal jaws. So now we're going to switch to a bowl gouge and we're going to uh, cut that cut that tenon. Stay out of the line of fire. And then I'm just going to flatten off the bottom a little bit, true it up. Okay. Stay on the right hand side of the tool rest. Get a flat surface. Make sure I've got a nice clean shoulder here. I'm using a parallel chuck that calls for parallel tenon. I need to clean that up just a little bit, so let me use a detail gouge for that. 3 8 inch detail uh, gouge, which has got a sharp point, makes it easy to get in there, get that nice square shoulder, come across flat area for the chuck jaws, and that's good. This type of project where you're cutting a lot of air, it's never a bad idea to mark where the edge of that propeller is to know you don't 
just to know where it is and I'll remember always keep your hand on the right hand side away from right uh, away from the the propeller so I'm going to take just a couple of practice cuts here before we reverse chuck it and you want to get the speed up a little bit fifteen to two thousand depending on how comfortable you are and we're just going to come off from off the wood onto the wood very carefully you can also feel it until it clicks come off the wood and then go back in Now let's reverse chuck it. Now we're ready to mark the top of the bowl. In this case, I think I'll just take the pencil and kind of guesstimate. We'll just move out a little bit. That one was a little small. And I want just a little wood boundary on the outside, so that's that's good. Okay. So now we're going to start shaping the outside. Move that tape. Yeah. Okay. Drop tool rest just a little bit. And we'll just start gradually bringing it around. We're going to most of the wood's going to come off here, so I'm going to start on the corner. getting there. I want to go down until I've got maybe oh, a quarter of an inch flat spot and that's where we'll we'll stop. So you want to bring the cut back to oh just short of where the bowl's going to be maybe a quarter of an inch. And let's move the tool rest to keep it more parallel to the area we're cutting. And you could use a pull cut. And I can see a ghost image. You can see it in your direction. I'm looking straight down on it. Or a push cut. That's about where I want it. Got some tool marks to clean up and I've got this bowl profile. I think I want to have this bowl stick out just a little bit from from the top so let's let's cut a cut the wall or the shoulder straight in. Less than a quarter of an inch I think. down it and I think it's about an eighth of an inch I think that's I'm gonna go down a little bit more there we go all right I gotta clean up these tool marks here because uh, too much to sand um, I'm gonna do a couple of things I'm gonna start with a larger bowl gouge first with swept back wings and I'm gonna do uh, a shear cut with that Very light touch, just to get rid of those tool marks. And 
and it would work better if I drop the handle and get more of a shear cut like this. And I've got a pretty clean cut mostly. Got a little bit of work right here. And then I'll be ready to sand. Got a little bit of a tear out here, but not much. And we clean that up at the very end of the project. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna well it's clean on this side doesn't look as clean on this side. Let me see if I can't take another pass. This time I think I may use uh, my regular shear scraper. Come in right here. And that's cleaned up nicely. I can I can I can sand that uh, that surface now. Maybe needs just a little bit of work right here. Get the All right. Now, when I reverse chuck it again, I've got to figure out how I'm going to hold it. Uh, am I going to grab it from the outside and possibly leave marks or am I going to do it on the inside and do a recess and it depends on the size of your chuck uh, what your options are all right when I reverse chuck it again I'm going to use the bowl as a recess so I need to measure the jaws I'm using which in this case could be my 40 millimeter jaws and I've checked and that's just a little bit wider than that pencil line I think I want to take it even smaller for that uh, that bowl thickness. I don't want it to be the part that's sticking out more than about a sixteenth of an inch, or I'm sorry, about an eighth of an inch wide. So I'm going to use a small set, uh, I'm going to use my half an inch bowl gouge and start hollowing. Come back here, drop tool rest just a little bit. Now I need to be thinking about how deep I'm going. So let's get my depth measure because I don't want to go much deeper than, than probably, probably that. I've got a long way to go. Gosh, I got three quarters of an inch. And I'll get that bump with a scraper. Okay, so let's get a round nose scraper and come back and, and finish cleaning that up. Okay, I've got a round nose negative rake scraper that'll fit that profile fairly well. So let's start cleaning up the bump in the middle. We want to cut it on dead center. Now this is the chuck I'm going to be using with these 40 millimeter jaws and it's a dovetail jaw in a recess but I don't really want to cut a dovetail on the inside but I want to make sure I've got at least parallel as deep as these jaws so it'll, it'll sit flush on, on these jaws so let's use a box scraper for that. Line this up with a bedway.
Now I come back with my round nose scraper to kind of blend that line at the bottom. And that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and sand this with a power sander. We're going to sand the inside by hand, start with, with 120 at a slower speed. I want this top surface to be flat. I want the side to be flat. And we'll go through the different grits. I'm going to power sand with the lathe off to get rid of any 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 tool marks, and then I'll uh, do it again with the uh, with uh, with the lathe on. Okay, I've got rid of most of the visible tool marks. So now I'm going to turn it at slow speed. And I'm going to be sanding with the bottom part of the disc, so it'll be coming away. Before we reverse it, we're going to use some abrasive paste on the inside. You can't buff the inside, so this is the closest thing to it. So we put it on with a lathe off. It'll, it'll just make it so smooth. Got to watch those wings, not too fast to speed. Beeswax, mineral oil, diatomaceous earth. It's a little bit like Yorkshire grit, said DIY. We do it until we don't get any color. There we go. Okay, let's take it off. Reverse check it. And I'm just hoping that won't leave too many marks. Feels good. So now we're going to finish the bottom of the wings and the box. Now remember, this is a cross grain orientation, similar to a, a bowl. So we're going to, uh, means on a bowl you go from small to large. We're going to do come down this come way, down this way on the inside. But then as you're doing the inside of a bowl, you go from large to small. So we're going to come in here and then we'll meet down here in the middle. And I think I'm going to start with a uh, 3 8 inch, or rather 5 8 inch bowl gouge. And then I might switch to something smaller. I need to. Let's get that tape. Let's start. First I'm going to go ahead and uh, flatten the bottom because I don't want the bottom to be stick out more than the wings. So I've got to come down at least an eighth of an inch. Otherwise it's going to spin, spin on the bowl and I don't want that. Well, maybe that wasn't the best way to chuck it. Let's see. Got a little bit of chip out here. No damage here. A little bit of damage here. I can fix that. My problem was I didn't make the wall parallel even far enough down if I put that shape there and I look at it I can tell it's angled it should have been straight if it if I'd had a straight wall I think it would have held without any problem now I've destroyed the tenon so I can't easily get back here to fix it um, got a couple of possibilities I might grip it on the outside with 50 millimeter jaws recognizing it's gonna scar it a little bit and I'll have to do some grab, cleanup so we're gonna grab this it. outer ring as a, as a tenon and these uh, larger bowl jaws are will be a perfect fit should leave minimal scarring because it's just about at the the right opening with the gap at least that's uh, i hope it is okay
All right, we're gonna press against it until it ticks. Before I get it too thin in the middle though, I'm gonna work on these wings because that's gonna be a thinner part. So uh, I'm gonna leave this here and we'll work on that later to give it strength so it doesn't flex too much on us. think about this okay I'm mounting it one more time it's just that uh, that bowl extension is just not long enough and it's not a dovetail so it's, it's certainly not an optimum hold but I think it's gonna work I did mark some lines to connect the bowl at the top and the bottom so I'll know exactly uh, a, a better idea what that profile is going to be because I want it to look like this bowl comes through the through the wall and I'm gonna bring up a soft touch to give it some support and maybe change to a different tool rest make it a little easier to get in close All right, so now we've got it held so it's, hopefully it won't come flying off back off this some I've got room to get in here okay I'm going to switch to a half inch bowl gouge to make it maybe a little easier a little less uh, less wood and right now I'm going right into end grain and that's part of the problem so I need to get rid of some of this wood right here Not going fast enough part of the problem got too much interrupted cut I'll speed it up a little bit again stay out of line of fire slow tool feed See how thin we're getting. Okay, we've still got a ways to go. Got to pick up the cut right here and bring it on in. looking good there not too bad need to come in and there's the bowl I need to bring it down to so come in a little bit more let's swing this out here
Okay, I need to bring the bowl in some because I want to uh, need to see a little bit of a gap here. Roll it over. Okay, got a little bit of wood showing here. That's good. Not quite. That shows my measurement is off just a little bit. I'm going to switch to a uh, two, uh, 3 8 inch bowl gap. Get in there a little tighter. Roll it over. thicker out here than I wanted but otherwise not too bad okay the rest of it's gonna be mostly sanding okay before I get around to sanding I want to check the bottom of the bowl to make sure it's not going to spin on the table and in this case it looks like it will so I've got to take the bowl bottom down some so very carefully reduce the size of the bottom I left a little bit extra in the bottom of the bowl so I shouldn't go through famous last words Okay, that looks like uh, looks like it might be okay. A little sanding. I'm going to do most of this power sanding off the camera, but I want to show you a little bit about how this profile looks here. It comes down a little bit in the corner, so what I want to wind up doing is on a spindle sander, I'm going to to try to match this profile like this and cut away all of this. I switched from a three inch disc to a two inch disc to make it easier to get in to maneuver in here. The other sanding task is I want to uh, radius this edge here on the top and bottom and bring it out so it makes the whole thing look thinner than it actually is. So I'll use a little uh, little sanding on that. All right, let's get started on our lid. Here's some samples of some boxes I've done in years past that give you some idea of the different type of varieties of lid shapes and also the knobs uh, varying from a short knob to a uh, finial. Okay, now that I got the box uh, finished and, and, and sanded to my satisfaction, I'm ready to do the lid. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have a two-part lid, uh, starting off with a disc and then adding some type of uh, uh, finial maybe that looks something like that maybe I'll use a piece of ebony um, so I'm going to start off using a uh, waste block with a piece of Turner's tape on it to hold this as I shape it round and put the foot this is going to be the bottom so I've already marked the center okay. use my 90 degree cone it won't leave much much of a mark it's going to be an inset lid so I'm going to put a little lip uh, here with a little tenon uh, to hold it. So we're going to let it set for just a few minutes and then we're going to start making it round and then put that little tenon that fit, fit inside. Okay, we've let it set for a few minutes. Now let's, let me just round it off using a spindle gouge. light color with a little spalting will be a nice uh, contrast 
Now I've got to flatten it because it's it's a little bit wonky here. So let me reach to a 3 8 inch bowl gouge to do that. Sloped in slightly. Get rid. Got to get rid of that little bulge there, but I'll do that in a moment. So I'm going to bring this down to uh, the size that's going to fit inside here. So I've measured that with some some calipers, and that's right about there. And measure it. Get pretty close. That looks pretty good. That's a little large. Now, this is cross grain, so I don't want to be coming in here because it's going to be picking up grain. I want to come in this direction. So let's get oriented for that. And I think my shear scraper will probably do an admirable job for that. So, Or as Tomislav calls it, his influencer, I think. All right, let's, let's do a trial fit real quick. Almost too small. This is going to be a loose fit. That's too small. So let's take it down a little bit further. I got plenty of wood here, so it won't be an issue. slope on it. Now let's check it out. Okay, it's getting close. Actually, you know, I think a tool would probably be easier for me to get in there. I think maybe this spear point scraper. Okay, don't want to make the same mistake of having it too loose, so let's test fit it. That's, that, I think that fits good. And I want, I want it to overhang just a little bit. I actually need to probably come down there just a little bit. I, I do want a little bit of an overhang, I like, I like that. So let's take just a wisp more off of the in the corner there. And I think maybe I'll use the detail gouge to get in there. There we go. That'll do it. And I've got it round. Now I think I'm trying to decide what that profile is going to look like hanging over. Do I want it sloped or rounded and I just got to think about that a little bit um, I think I want it rounded up just a little bit from the bottom and I think I'll use this influencer for that Okay, I think that looks good. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reverse. I'm going to reverse chuck this, uh, but I've got to clean up that little bulge at the bottom. Let's hope it's been sitting there long enough to be able to cut cut that little nubbin off. Okay, let's reverse chuck it. Uh, if I, my jaws are going to hold this with a, with a reasonable gap, so it's close to a full circle, 
I don't think it's going to scar it up much. And if not, I could have used a gem chuck, but this is certainly uh, faster. And I'm just going to shape from the top round to the bottom. Maybe put a bit of an OG shape here out to the out to the wing. I'm going to use a half inch half inch gouge. Ah, lower the tool rest a little bit. And I'm just going to shape it here. On a slightly rounded edge here. That looks good. That slope almost is what I'm looking for. Now I think I might be might be easier to again use my influencer. Back off the rest just a little bit. Find something to make a little divot in here first, like a skew. Make sure the drill bit gets centered. There we go. Yes, that looks good. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use a 5 16 inch drill bit, give a little larger hole to give a little more glue surface. And I've measured the thickness here, including the tenon that goes down. And, and uh, I can drill almost... Uh, just under a half an inch, so I'm going to calibrate this here to a half an inch. Just bring it up where it touches, and then I can I can measure the uh, eighth of an inch increments. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths. And just a skosh less. But yeah, I think I'm 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 happy with that. I especially like the contrast. Now I'm not real happy with the the shape on the bottom. I think that needs a little work. Let me think about that. Okay, I've decided I want to make this a sharper edge so I don't know how to safely easily get in there. I guess there's a couple of approaches I could, uh, I, I think that the one I'm going to use is probably just use this scrap, spindle scrap that I keep handy, keep a box full of them. And maybe, I don't have a divot here to center it on, so I don't want to uh, to do it that way. So I think what I want to do is just turn a, a tiny little jam chuck, a little spindle that this will go on. Um, and, and maybe that'll give me enough surface, maybe with a piece of tape. You, take a look at that. We have a need for some special gem, some special way of mounting. So it's good to practice with these kinds of things for problem solving. Yeah, that looks good. And with that slope down there, gosh, that's almost tight enough as it is. I bet if I put a little bit of tongue oil on it. Fibers will swell and probably do just fine. Twist it, make sure I've got a nice flat surface. Okay. Now, see what tool I want to use to to do that little draw cut with, and I think this half inch spindle gouge probably work fine. Just bring it down here. I 
I think I like that. I think I like that. So let's see how that looks with the box. Yeah, I like that that sharp overhang. Now all I've got to do is reverse chuck it again and finish refining the top. And I got a pretty clean cut, so I think it's close enough to uh, sand with 240. I'm afraid this spalted maple might be a little too soft to texture, but I think I could put a few small beads on the bottom. I don't want to get that nice slope. Here's my little pyramid of point tool. This will work great. We're just putting a couple of little small V grooves or beads. Get the speed up a little bit. Drop the handle, roll it over. Drop the handle, roll it over. I think I'll do some more. Maybe do three. I like that. All right. And go back to that piece of 220. Just kind of get those V grooves a little bit, a little beads. And take this spindle scrap and Boy, that tongue oil holds it good. Put it back in my, my scrap box. Now I'm looking at this lid to see, do I want it just to have it smooth like this, or do I want to put a bead out here, or maybe a tiny little fillet right here? I'm not sure. My microphone went out, so now I'm going to do a voiceover. So the finial is going to look this kind of shape. I found a piece of uh, uh, tiger wood or concalvo uh, owls. Uh, so I think I'm going to make that ball near the bottom of the finial a little bit smaller. So I measure it, and I think about three and a half inches is about the right, right length. It's very hard uh, wood from South America. It's used for decking. So now I put in my uh, live center, 90-degree 90, 90 cone that, that uh, does minimal damage. Uh, really nice when you just need a little bit of reinforcement here to keep it from vibrating. So... Use my spindle roughing gouge and basically get it uh, turned around. A little bit cone shaped since the part near the tailstock is going to be the smaller end. And I mark the uh, features uh, where I'm going to put the bottom of the, the tall part. And I start uh, shaping the bead at the base because that's what I'm going to cut down into. And I want nice, even. Uh, cuts. I, I want it sli uh, sloped. You can see here I'm getting a nice slight slope all the way to the base of that beard, uh, a bead. And I refine the other side of the bead using a skew to make a V cut. To me, this is the best tool for making these, marking these kind of features and getting nice clean cuts. Now I mark the bottom of what's going to be the large round bead. Now I switch back to a spindle gouge to kind of refine that small bead at the top. And now I start turning that ball. You can see with the heel how burnished, how shiny it looks when I'm actually burnishing the cut. I decided that uh, that initial bead was a little too large, so I've t taken it down a little bit with a skew. and. And instead of being rounded on the ends, I'm, I'm making it more of a sharp, almost like a disc. And now I need to mark the bottom uh, of this ball where it's going to sit against the uh, top of that, that maple lid. So I'm kind of rounding that cut in and shaping in from the bottom of the ball. Now I'm cutting it off at a 45 degree angle. And I brace it, the saw up against my fingernail. Uh, just to get it started. So I back off the tailstock a little bit as I finish that uh, that cut. I'll sand that up later. 
And now I'm going to take a 1 8 inch parting tool and start uh, making the tenon that's going to slip into that hole at the top of the roof. And I bring it down, and then I'm going to undercut it some underneath that uh, that cover. I've I've calipered that this, and uh, but the caliper slips on me, so I wind up making a little bit too large. So I'm refining the the size. And then I take a thin parting tool to actually part it off, sixteenth of an inch parting tool. Don't grab it, the part that's coming off, just let it fall into your hands or you'll get some little torn strands at the end of the part. And there we go. Now, because I did get the uh, that little tenon a little too large, uh, here's how I solved that problem. I wrapped it with tape and I'm going to put it back into that same same chuck. Uh, not too not too hard, but with that tape protecting it very hard wood. I'm not going to scratch it And then I use coarse sandpaper to just take this tenon down so it'll fit Okay, now I'm undercutting uh, Underneath the, the finial so it'll it'll sit flat against the the roof line The sharp point tool And it fits well. I like how it, it, it's touching the wood evenly. Uh, slopes kind of match. I love the contrast of that uh, maple against the darker mahogany, especially when I put an oil finish on that mahogany. It'll really, it should really pop. And I've taken this lid down a little bit from the original. Uh, I think a little thinner makes it look a little bit better. Here's where I'm gonna put my name underneath it uh, on the underside of the wing. Hey, if you're a new viewer to this channel, I'd appreciate you writing in the comments about the one uh, thing that you gained from watching this video. Your questions and feedback matter, so post them in the comments below. I have links to the videos from my collaboration partners in the video description area, so please check out to see how Richard, Sam, and Tommy dealt with their winged bo uh, uh, boxes. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back, you hear?